Hey y'all, so let's get right into these garlic steak bites and red skin smashed potatoes. You can use whatever cut of steak you like, but this is how I made mine, let me show you. So first, you wanna make sure you get your potatoes down into a bowl or a plate. I know a lot of people don't like their food to touch, but this is touching today. For my potatoes, I got a cup and a half of chicken stock. Then I used about five red skin potatoes. I diced them up, or you can say you, I cubed them up into about four pieces. You wanna make sure that your potatoes are the exact same size or around the same size so that they can cook evenly. I used red skin potatoes, but you can use any kind of potato you like. And if you choose a potato not to peel, just make sure you get the bruises off. I cut mine into four pieces. You can cut them into six if you like for the potato but remember that the red skin potatoes are not that big unless you get those super huge ones like sam's club have in different places we didn't really need those so we just got a regular old bag of red skin potatoes a regular five pound bag i got mine from kroger i cleaned them really really well and made sure there was no added bruises or anything to those potatoes before i cleaned them and got them and then once you see you see the starch on my knife potatoes are really really starchy by right so after you get them diced up or sorry again y'all after you get them cubed up you want to drop them in some ice cold water to get rid of some of that starch i grabbed them and added them to my strainer so that i can put them in my ice bath then rinsed them again and added them to that hot boiling chicken stock and began to work on my steak. I'm using New York strip steak. I used two New York strip steaks. I removed the fat from my steak first. You can definitely cook it with the fat on. My mom always says that's where the flavor is, but my dog was standing right under my feet and he could not wait for those trimmings. So I removed the ends off first, the fat trimming off first, and then I sliced it and I diced it. You do not want to make them too, too small because then your meat would get a little bit hard and you want to still keep that tender bite on your steak. So you can see I made mine about an inch um, and you and it depends on too how thick your steak is but here's how I cut mine I think you should cut yours just like this now if you're using a ribeye or any other choice steak it would be different but with the New York strip to me it's just easy to go right down the middle and slice once one way up and then <laughs> what am I even saying y'all y'all can see how I cut it cut it like this it's simple and it's easy to do. We're gonna get this cleaned again because just cutting it, I just feel the need to wash everything twice anyway. I'm, the water's always running in my kitchen for whatever reason, always running. I'm always doing something with the water and rinsing and rinsing. So after I got these cut to the desired pieces I wanted, I grabbed my bowl, added the steak into my bowl, and then I added in some Worcestershire. I added about, I would say, about a teaspoon of Worcestershire. And I also added in about, I'll say about a teaspoon and a half of Worcestershire, maybe even a tablespoon. And then about a teaspoon of salt and a half a, tea, a half a teaspoon of soy salt. And then I added in soul seasoning. You can use as much soul seasoning as you like because it's no salt. And then I added in some minced garlic because we're gonna play up that garlic flavor. I got a hot skillet, very, very hot skillet. Added in some grapeseed oil to that hot skillet and began to put my steak pieces in there. They cooked only like a minute and a half on each side until they were just nice and brown, the color that I want. I wanted that nice little char on them. So once I got all of these flipped over individually, I couldn't find the right utensil that I needed to flip these easily. So I'm using these, these tongs, and they are not working for me, as you can see. Once I got them flipped, I used about a teaspoon of Kerry's Gold garlic butter and a sprig of rosemary. I mixed that all up really, really well, making sure that butter and those juices from the pan and the aromatics from the rosemary got all through my steak and then I took it off the heat and covered it for a minute and I worked on my garlic sauce. I simply just diced up one fresh garlic clove, got about three tablespoons of unsalted butter and some parsley flakes and some garlic paste and put that into a saucepan and that's my garlic sauce for my steak bites. The garlic sauce for the steak bites is so simple because remember we already added those flavors in our steak. 
which is over there resting and marinating, you can actually don't even let it rest and marinate. It's already done at a perfect temperature. You can eat it like it is, or you can add this sauce right here. So you see we have the garlic, I mean, excuse me, the unsalted butter, the fresh garlic, the garlic paste, and parsley and we just simply gave it a mix on low heat here's a little tip i added just a dash of white wine at this step and then took it off the heat and added it right into my steak bites now let's get started on our red skin mashed potatoes smash potatoes once they were fork tender i drained them drained all of the liquid off and then i began to mash them i used my potato masher the other day y'all we did not have a potato masher and i used a whisk I never ever would have thought I could use a whisk with mashing potatoes, but it worked out just fine. Well, today I was at home, so I had a potato masher and I used it. My Borson spreadable garlic cheese and heavy whipping cream. You can eyeball this, use as much as you want or like or love. It depends on how thick you want your potatoes or how thin. I also use some black pepper and garlic salt a little bit, maybe like a half a teaspoon of each. And then I gave that a mix, mix it up really well. As you see, my potatoes are still very thick right here at this point. And this is how I wanted them. I wanted them to still stay thick. So you can use milk or you can use half and half, but heavy cream keeps those potatoes nice and thick. Gotta taste them. After the taste test, I realized they needed a little bit more salt. Now I gave them another mix just to see before I tasted them again to make sure that they were just right. Perfect. They were absolutely perfect. Making potatoes is really, really a preference. So now that I'm ready to plate, I grabbed my bowl and I began to layer just a nice heaping amount of mashed potatoes in my bowl. I like to kind of get the potatoes in the bowl and spread it out. It's almost like you're creating like a rose, but you're kind of getting them, getting the, the sides kind of rounded out. So they're just not, they're still rustic in your bowl, but they're just not like all over the place. So I normally just drop a heap in the middle and then spread it out that way with my spoon. And then it also depends on what you're adding because if you add like sauces on top of potatoes, you can create those little grooves when you add it, when you add your meat or what vegetable or whatever you're adding on top of it and it kind of nestles right in there. And that's what I like most about the way I plate my mashed potatoes personally. As you guys saw, I did not add butter to my potatoes this time and I love butter. But the reason I didn't add butter to the potatoes is because we have those garlic butter steak bites that is full of butter already. So once we drop those steak bites onto these mashed potatoes, you see the way that butter is just nestling down in those potatoes. So good, making a perfect bite. So depending on what you do, what you're layering, depends on how many flavors you add to each layer because the potatoes didn't need butter because their cousins came around with plenty of butter for them. So, and do you see that garlic, y'all? Get a close up on the garlic on, this, on these steak bites. So, so good. If you try this, let me know. It's also very, very simple. This is a perfect meal, perfect date night meal really a any night meal i made these for my husband and my son and they both love them i can also see adding these to a holiday party or just having them by themselves having them over rice make sure you add your green vegetables we did not have a green vegetable on the plate today but i made myself a salad so it's cool but these garlic steak bites it's a spin on your regular steak bites normally people like uh more of a sweeter sauce but we all love garlic butter. It's almost like going to Benihana or going to an Asian restaurant or Japanese restaurant and liking to get that uh, garlic butter on your steak. So try these over rice as well. Try these over green beans or even broccoli. Anything you'd like to try. So definitely some pasta. Oh my God. Trying garlic butter steak bites on pasta just took me over the top just gave me an idea almost immediately with a whole bunch of onions it sounds so good y'all so either way you like to do it 
This is the easy and simple recipe that you can try at any time. And do not forget to add the parsley for color and for health. <laughs> and this is how it went down in Club Kitchen. Bye.